South Korea elects a new president, who's not a big fan of China. China warns the U.S. over forming a Pacific NATO, and Xi Jinping still plans to invade Taiwan. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Shelley Zhang, filling in for Chris Chappell, who's visiting his parents like a filial son. Hi, Chris's mom and dad. South Korea has elected a new president, Yoon Suk Yeol. Yoon, who will take office in May, is from South Korea's Conservative Party. He had faced criticism in the press during his campaign for saying that most South Koreans dislike China. What an awful thing to say! Except, of course, he was right. Survey after survey in recent years has shown that South Koreans, young voters especially, dislike China even more than they dislike Japan. Yeah, that's saying something. In one survey, over 58% of the respondents called China close to evil, while only 4.5% said that it was close to good. Now, it's possible that South Koreans are finally wising up to the Chinese Communist Party's abuses, like ethnic slave labor, environmental destruction, coercive trade practices, a massive COVID cover-up, and aggressive territorial claims. Or maybe they're just mad that China tried to claim kimchi has been part of Chinese culture since ancient times. It's definitely the kimchi. From South Korea's perspective, the only thing worse than China claiming kimchi would be China claiming BTS. Do not mess with K-pop stands. As the new president, Jung will most likely steer South Korea away from China and towards the U.S. How do we know? Well, because he said this. South Korea and the United States share an alliance forged in blood as we have fought together to protect freedom against the tyranny of communism. Yeah, the Chinese Communist Party hates this. Yoon also added that South Korea and the U.S. need to rebuild this alliance. Now, that could mean more trade with the U.S. and potentially even more U.S. troops or missile defense facilities stationed in South Korea. Now, U.S. military presence in South Korea has been a contentious issue with China. While the U.S. presence is ostensibly aimed at protecting the region from North Korea, everyone knows it's also about China and its kimchi-stealing ways. And speaking of contentious issues, several former U.S. officials visited Taiwan last week. The U.S. technically has no diplomatic relationship with Taiwan. So they send congresspeople and retired officials from previous administrations who speak in no official capacity whatsoever, technically. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the Biden administration set one of these officially unofficial delegations to Taiwan. And as part of that, Admiral Mike Mullen, who worked under Obama as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said, I do hope by being here with you, we can reassure you and your people, as well as our allies and partners in the region, that the United States stands firm behind its commitments. Meanwhile, Trump's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo also visited Taiwan, not as part of a delegation, just as a private citizen, which meant that Pompeo could say this. It is my view that the United States government should immediately take necessary and long overdue steps to do the right and obvious thing that is to offer the Republic of China, Taiwan, America's diplomatic recognition as a free and sovereign country. Recognize Taiwan, which is a country, as a country? Huh, that's a bold strategy. And of course, the Chinese Communist Party will hate this. But hey, if the U.S. is ever going to do it, what better time than right now? It's not like China's going to invade Taiwan this month, not while it's still watching to see what happens with Ukraine. And that's because Russia's invasion of Ukraine has really unsettled China. You know, what with the Western world coming to Ukraine's aid faster and more cooperatively than anyone expected. It says something when the West works together and everyone's first reaction is surprise and disbelief. But don't worry. According to the CIA, Chinese leader Xi Jinping is still determined to invade Taiwan. 
CIA Director William Burns spoke at a House intelligence hearing this week, saying, I do think that they have been surprised and unsettled to some extent by what they've seen in Ukraine over the last 12 days, everything from the strength of the Western reaction to the way in which Ukrainians have fiercely resisted. But also, I would not underestimate President Xi and the Chinese leadership's determination with regard to Taiwan. In other words, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is showing the Chinese regime that invading another country is a bad idea. But the Chinese Communist Party will probably do it anyway. On the plus side, when we send Chris to Taiwan to cover the invasion, at least the food will be good. Meanwhile, Eli Ratner, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Affairs, said that China is the Department of Defense's pacing challenge and that Taiwan is the pacing scenario. Now, pacing, that's a weird turn of phrase to use. But here's what the U.S. government is saying. Don't get too distracted by Russia, because China is the real big bad. And the next defense budget proposal will reflect that reality. Sounds like the Department of Defense has been paying attention to the Chinese regime's coercive trade practices, massive COVID cover-up, and aggressive territorial claims over kimchi. More after the break. Welcome back. China's foreign minister has warned the U.S. that it had better not form a Pacific NATO to back Taiwan. Now, the U.S. is not officially proposing that, but China is not scared over nothing because the whole Russia invading Ukraine thing is strengthening Western alliances in general. China's foreign minister Wang Yi said, the perverse actions run counter to the common aspiration of the region for peace. Now, speaking of peace, he added, Taiwan will eventually return to the embrace of the motherland. Funny how the embrace of the motherland looks like a chokehold. Wang also said that if the U.S. insists on forming a Pacific NATO, this would not only push Taiwan into a precarious situation, but will also bring unbearable consequences for the U.S. side. In other words, the only way for America to have peace is for it to completely give up and let the Chinese Communist Party embrace Taiwan with or without Taiwan's consent. Meanwhile, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has offered to play a role in mediating the Ukraine crisis. Hey, it's just what we predicted on China Uncensored last week. If the West is dumb enough to fall for it, China mediating with Russia will go just about as well as China mediating with North Korea, like it did during the six-party talks. You know, the ones that completely failed to stop North Korea from making nuclear weapons those six-party talks. So let me reiterate. When Xi Jinping gives Putin a friendship medal and said literally just last month that there are no forbidden areas of cooperation when it comes to defying the U.S., you don't need a magic eight ball to tell you letting China mediate for Russia is a trap. Cybersecurity firm Mandiant said this week that Chinese hackers have infiltrated networks of at least six U.S. state governments. Now, the public report doesn't name which states those are, but it does name the hacking group, APT41. That name may sound familiar because in 2020, the Department of Justice indicted five Chinese nationals, some of which were connected with APT41. It was for the theft of source code, software code signing certificates, customer account data, and valuable business information. Now, it's unclear exactly what data was compromised in this latest hack, but the report says APT41's recent activity against U.S. state governments consists of significant new capabilities. It's great to see so much innovation coming out of China. And Amazon, the world's second biggest retailer, has been linked to forced labor in China. And no one is surprised. Now, technically, Amazon's suppliers are the ones using slave labor. The suppliers help produce Amazon-branded devices and products sold under house labels like Amazon Basics. This is based on a report from the Tech Transparency Project. It says Amazon's list of suppliers includes five companies linked to what China calls labor transfer programs. Now, these are government-sponsored programs that take workers from one region and move them by bus or train to another region to work. 
Specifically, they're now being used to take Uyghurs, the mostly Muslim ethnic group in Xinjiang, and force them to work in factories in other Chinese provinces. This allows China to get around U.S. sanctions targeted at forced labor in Xinjiang. Now, according to NBC, Amazon declined to comment on these allegations. Instead, an Amazon spokesperson gave a general statement saying, Amazon complies with the laws and regulations in all jurisdictions in which it operates and expects suppliers to adhere to our supply chain standards. So that statement could be 100% true while also being 100% misleading, because obviously Amazon expects their suppliers to not subcontract to companies that are using forced labor. But they're also obviously willing to not look too closely at their suppliers. Looks like Jeff Bezos should get himself one of these t-shirts. I turned a blind eye to ethnic cleansing in China, and all I got was the slightly cheaper t-shirt. That is, by the way, a real t-shirt that you can buy on our China Uncensored merch store. Support the show while sticking it to Amazon. Don't worry, our t-shirts, unlike the ones you buy from Amazon, are definitely not made in China. The link to our merch store is below. I'm Shelly Zhang. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.